Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Cakes by MK. In today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to beautifully cover a cake in fondant and I'm going to be sharing with you guys two different ways to achieve those nice sharp edges on the top. Now before we get into it, a quick shout out to today's sponsor Squarespace. If you've never heard about Squarespace before, they are an amazing website builder with the most gorgeous templates. Stay tuned to learn more about them later on in this video as well as how you can get 10 off your first Squarespace purchase. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below. Apart from that, let's get right into this video. So the first thing you want to do is prepare your fondant so that it's ready to roll. So today I'll be using this homemade marshmallow fondant which is fresh so it's already nice and soft for me to use. I'll post a link to this recipe below. But if you're using a ready-made fondant, this one here is the Pet Nice brand, then it's most likely going to be quite firm and you're going to have to knead it until it becomes soft and pliable so that you can actually roll it out. So as you can see here, before I knead it, it breaks really easily and just isn't that soft doughy consistency that we need. So when kneading the fondant, the best way to do this is to use the palm of your hands. By doing it this way, it allows you to put more pressure on the fondant without tiring your hands out. And this is especially important when kneading large batches of ready-made fondant because it can be quite a workout. So you want to get it done in the easiest way possible. So you just want to knead away until it becomes like a doughy but still slightly firm consistency. Now when kneading your fondant, if it feels quite dry and it's just not becoming soft, then you can add some shortening to the fondant and just knead that in. And alternatively, if your fondant is too soft and kind of sticking everywhere, then you can just sprinkle some corn flour or even icing sugar on the surface that you're kneading it on, and even add some of it to your fondant itself and knead that in as well. These variations in fondant consistency can occur depending on the climate that you're staying in. Okay, so because I'll be covering a round cake, I'm going to start off by getting my fondant as round as possible before I start rolling it out. So to roll out my fondant, I've got a fondant roller here, but you can also use a regular rolling pin. And then the cake I'm going to be covering is a six inch three layer ganached cake. Keep in mind that the frosting on your cake needs to be really firm when covering it with fondant. And I find ganache works the best and it doesn't become soft too quickly either. So it allows you more time to kind of work with your fondant. Now to roll out my fondant, I just sprinkled some corn flour on my table and then am rolling out the fondant on that so that it doesn't stick to my table. I'm just going in a simple back and forth motion here and then I flip my fondant around and do the same thing to create a large circle. So the key here is to roll out your fondant so that it's large enough to cover your cake entirely with some excess. It's always better to have too much fondant than too less. Now you can measure your cake out and then measure your fondant as you're rolling it out to make sure your fondant is large enough. But I tend to only do this for larger cakes because that's when I tend to kind of get it wrong and roll it out too small. Now sometimes when rolling out fondant, air bubbles can appear and you want to pop these using a sharp tip like I have here. You can also use a toothpick for this. Now my fondant doesn't actually have any, which is great, but just to demonstrate, let's pretend that that was an air bubble. So you just want to pop it and then re-roll that area so that it smoothens out. So this is the kind of thickness that you want your fondant to be. So you don't want it too thin, otherwise it may break, but you don't want it too thick either. So what I'm doing next is rolling the fondant onto my roller and putting that aside while we work on our cake. So to help the fondant stick to my cake, I'm just applying some shortening all over my ganache and then I'm going to slowly unroll my fondant over my cake. Now what I like to do to prevent the fondant from breaking at the top is when I'm halfway there I start applying a little bit of pressure on the top edges that are covered with fondant so that it sticks to the cake and then finish with the rest of the cake. Next, I immediately start smoothing out the top with my fondant smoother. And if you notice that your fondant smoother is kind of sticking to your fondant, then just sprinkle some more corn flour on your fondant and then smooth it out. Then after that, I quickly start securing the top edges of my fondant so that there isn't too much pressure weighing the fondant down. And this will prevent the top edges from ripping. Now when doing this, just be careful because if you're rough like me, then you can rip your fondant like I have here. But don't worry if you get a little rip like that, you can always fix it up by just pressing some of the surrounding fondant together to cover it up and then smooth it out later with your fondant smoother. Now 
Next I'm starting to cover all the sides with fondant by gently spreading out sections of the fondant and then using my hands to stick the fondant to the cake. And you just want to repeat this process around the entire cake until it's fully covered in fondant. Now once the cake is covered, you want to use an X-Acto knife or something sharp to cut off the excess fondant from around the bottom of the cake. Now once that's done, I'm just going to use my fondant scraper to gently push some of the fondant down and then clean that up again with my X-Acto blade so that the fondant is nice and flush with the cake board. And then once that's done, it's time to work on our sharp edges. Now before we get into the two different ways to achieve those nice sharp edges on the tops of your fondant cakes, I'm just going to take a quick break to talk to you guys a bit more about today's sponsor Squarespace. So whether you're a content creator, a business owner, or perhaps you want to build an online portfolio to showcase your work, you're probably going to need some kind of website and Squarespace is an awesome place to start. One of my favorite things about Squarespace as a busy content creator are the beautifully designed templates that are super easy to use. There are so many to choose from and you can filter templates based on the type of website you're building. Another thing I really love about Squarespace are the website analytics that they offer. As a business owner, it's really important to understand where your traffic is coming from and Squarespace helps you to do just that. You can see how many unique viewers are coming to your site, where they're located in the world, as well as gain insights into your top traffic sources. And on top of that, Squarespace also allows you to create unique mailing lists so that you're getting the right message to the right people. So if you've seriously been considering starting your own website, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash cakesbymk to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. I'll post a link below to that discount code as well so you guys can go ahead and check it out once you're ready. Apart from that, let's get back to those sharp fondant edges. So the first method I'm going to show you guys is by using two fondant smoothers. So what you want to do is hold one of the smoothers up against the side of the cake and then use the other one to start gently pushing the fondant on the top of the cake into the fondant smoother you're holding on the side. And this will start to create a sharp edge on the top of your cake. So just keep moving your fondant scrapers around the top edge of the cake to create that sharp edge. So I've done half of the cake now and you can see there's a nice sharp edge on half of the cake. Now the next method I'm going to show you guys is to flip your cake over and then once it's securely on the table you're working on, you want to go ahead and gently remove the cake board. I'm just using an offset spatula here to do that. And then once that's off, you want to grab your fondant smoother and start gently pushing the fondant down so that the edges are touching the surface you're working on. And you're kind of just getting rid of that little shadow on the bottom. As you're doing this, you may notice that in places where your fondant is thicker, you may have some excess fondant that appears on the bottom like I do here. And we'll just clean that up again with our X-Acto knife once we're done. And then once that's done, you just want to flip your cake over again and place it where you want. I'm putting mine back onto my cake board. And then you just want to finish off by smoothing everything out again. And once you're happy with how everything is looking, you're left with a beautiful fondant cake that is ready to decorate. So that is it guys, that is how you beautifully cover a cake in fondant and how you get those nice sharp edges on the tops as well. I hope these tips and tricks were helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching Cakes by MK and I'll see you guys in the next video.